heard the expression, no means no. But today we are joined by Scott Hargraves, who is the Executive Director at the Institute of Public Affairs, to discuss the difference between yes and yes. Scott has written an article in The Spectator magazine this week about Prime Minister Anthony Albanese's proposed voice to Parliament and the discussion facing Australians at the referendum toward the end of this year. The piece was subtitled, Well-meaning Australians have no idea what they are voting for. Scott, welcome to Spectator TV. Uh, thank you for having me. Look, as you said, opponents of the voice to Parliament have argued that it is inherently wrong to enshrine race at the centre of the Australian Constitution and to give one racially defined group civic rights defined, uh, denied to all other citizens. It breaches the principle of political equality, which is fundamental to liberal democracy, which is well said, I must say, Scott. It is also the position of the Liberal leader and opposition leader, Peter Dutton, who has finally come out to support the No campaign, which is why he was featured as the cover of our Spectator magazine this week. Now, as far as we can tell, the majority of conservatives and liberal minded people agree. But let us sit down now and have a little chat about the yes voters. Now, you posit that there are two positions in the yes camp, the yes and the yes. Scott, what's the difference? Well, I thought it was worth having a look at. And uh, by the way, uh, congratulations to um, uh, The Spectator on uh, its 15 years and, uh, and its wonderful initiative of uh, Spectator TV. And uh, it's great to be here. So uh, we do now have uh, a firm voice uh, for no in the political system, which I, I hope will ensure there's a debate. But as you say, Liberals and Conservatives have a fundamental problem with the voice because it jettisons that principle of political equality that's really at the heart of our democracy. But it occurred to me that um, as we run that argument, there is a section of the yes voters um, for whom that is not an objection. Uh, they actually do really want to overturn the liberal democratic nature of the Australian political system. You know, they might see it as a bourgeois patriarchal construct that actually needs to be overturned, that it's time to return sovereignty um, to the First Nations people and essentially start again with the Constitution. So liberal arguments actually aren't, aren't going to have any effect on that portion of the yes vote. So, but perhaps the uh, portion of the yes vote that is of more interest is, is really just ordinary, well-meaning Australians who really do just want better outcomes for Indigenous Australians. And that's really the focus of my article. Well, what your article appears to suggest, and what you have just explained here briefly, is that there are two different groups of people who intend to vote yes in the referendum. Those that mistakenly think that this racial bureaucracy will improve the lives of remote communities, although I must admit they are a little unclear as to how that might actually work, and a second yes voter who is seeking something more catastrophic and frightening for Australia's democracy as a whole. My question to you is, can these moderate yes voters, the first group, the ones who think that they are doing the right thing, can they be reasoned with? And do you think that the no campaign can change their minds before the end of the year? Well, what I think it's about is, is testing some of their assumptions. So before we, we get to... Um, you know, strong persuasive techniques. I just, you know, it's it's a conversation uh, with people. This might be had in around kitchen tables, in in pubs, in workrooms, right across Australia. And so, when when somebody says, "Oh, the Indigenous people of Australia, we need to do this because they have no voice and no rights," and and they have no one sticking up for them, and you sort of say, "Well, there are over three thousand Indigenous corporations in Australia at the moment. There are over one thousand bureaucrats already." operating in the National Indigenous Australians Agency. There are some form of land claims over 40% of the Australian continent. Um, it's not right to say that uh, Indigenous Australians have no voice. It's not correct to say that they are being denied civic rights. So what I think the, the process I'm, I'm thinking of is that conversation where you say, really test those assumptions. If you still are absolutely determined to vote, yes, that's always your democratic right. But gee, you better make sure that you, um, that you know for sure that your premises are correct before you reach that conclusion.